Hey everyone, let's take a look at how to create the exploded isometric view of in the assembly drawing and also learn how to create the bill of materials and the balloons. It is very important to create the exploded isometric view of the assembly in the drawing so that all the parts can be identified and tabulated using the bill of materials uh, which, can, which we can customize it to include the type of material use the number of uh, quantities for that particular component and also indicate them using uh, the balloons so let's get to the SOLIDWORKS and let's start off with one example there are three components in this uh, assembly and we will begin with uh, one of the component here which is the um, part one um, this is a um, you know rectangular uh, block with the hole at the center and then there are two cutouts on the two uh, corners here along the uh, length direction so now uh, we're going to create the assembly of uh, this component also remember the order in which we insert the component in an assembly also uh, is very important when we create the balloons in the uh, drawing. So I'm going to go to file, make assembly from part. I'm going to click on the graphics area to bring up that component here. So this is our first part and so the F is attached to this part which means that the part is fixed and we cannot move it. Uh, it it is completely fixed after that let's go to insert components and let's browse in to bring in the um, other component so this is the base uh, you know the base uh, block for example uh, we want to place this uh, orange colored block on the top of this blue colored block so that they fit into each other uh, know completely and one of the important things when we create the assembly is that if you see any uh, cylindricity or the circular uh, geometry where we can align the axis uh, that should be done uh, as a first uh, mate so that the assembly becomes easier to create so I'm going to select this inner cylindrical face uh, for the holes of these two components and then click on the mat and using the coincident option here we can create this uh, assembly but uh, there are sometimes also the concentric options that will also be uh, valid and not the coincident components so I'm going to accept it and then click OK the next um, made that I'm going to create is let's say these top faces and I'm going to click OK. The assembly still says it's underdefined so I'm going to come out of this and see where is the degrees of freedom is still uh, available and I can see that uh, the blue part which was the second part that we've added is still free to rotate but it's not uh, you know able to translate. So we can restrict that you know the degrees of freedom by using these two faces so I'm going to go to mate click on these two faces and then using the coincident I'm going to click OK and then on the check mark now we can see the assembly is fully defined here I'm going to go to insert components and bring in the third component for this example which is basically a post and I'm going to place it somewhere here so obviously the logical approach to create the assembly would be to select the cylindrical face of this post and using the control key we can select this inner cylindrical face of the holes and then go to mate click on this green check mark here to finish adding this mate and one final step in this case would be to click on the top face of this post and the top face of this block 
click OK and then I'm going to click on the check mark so now this post is fixed here although you would notice the assembly is still underdefined and that is because there is still a rotation of this uh, post with respect to the Y axis and that is the reason why uh, the assembly is still underdefined even though none of the components are able to move freely from one another. We can lock the rotation of this cylindrical post in order to get that fully defined. So once we have created this uh, assembly here, before we take it to the assembly drawing, uh, some of the times the components are merged in one another and they are not easily um, you know, separated from each other so that it becomes difficult to view these components in the assembly drawing if they are especially if they are overlapping or one component is uh, is hidden due to the other component so what we need to do is create the exploded assembly drawing in this case under the assembly tab I can go to exploded view click on it and we can create the disassembly process just the way we do we would do it in the real life so for example first thing that we would do is to separate this pin out of this uh, assembly so I'm going to click on this pin first and you would notice that I can move that pin in the y direction or the z or the x direction I can also rotate it but the logical way obviously would be to move it in the y direction and not in the z direction because it cannot come out like that so I can simply drag it up or I can in input the values here as how much I want to um, you know translate it or uh, change its location to the new position based on these input parameters and once we've done that then I'm going to click on the done so that one component is now uh, disassembled or shown in the exploded state next thing I'm going to be clicking on this blue component here and I'm going to bring that down then click done and although all the components are now separated from one another you don't really need to do anything with the orange component but just for the sake of it I'm going to click on it and uh, let's say I move it to uh, slightly sideways and then click on done so there are three exploded steps that uh, we have created here uh, to disassemble this assembly and then click OK in order to get it back to the collapsed state all you have to do is simply right click on the header file name of the assembly and then click on collapse so the assembly comes back to its original state again if you right click on it and then click on explode it will be shown in the exploded state the way we have created or even we can animate it so if we say animate create you can see the assembly is now uh, collapsed in the uh, form of animation and you can even save this animation you can uh, slower the play speed you can make it faster uh, and you can also save this animation in the suitable format you can save it as AVI or FLV or MP4 um, these are just some of the video files that you can play it on and include in your presentation which then becomes independent of the SOLIDWORKS platform okay so once we've created this exploded view it doesn't really matter in which state that you leave this assembly here in the exploded uh, or the collapsed form first you need to save this rebuild it and once you save it then we can go to file and then make drawing from assembly choose the drawing sheet and we can use uh, one of the views here for example if I drag this isometric view I can adjust the scale and everything and let's say I want to show this in the exploded form we can see under the reference configuration by default I can show it in exploded 
and so all the components become in the exploded form once we click on this checkbox here if there are more than one exploded uh, views that we had created there uh, those options would also appear here and then I'm going to click OK so that way we can make this exploded uh, view possible here the next thing is to add the auto balloons or you can even use the manual balloons so let's go to annotation tab and then either you can select the balloon or auto balloon option if we select the auto balloon option then you would see the balloons are created again you can you know set those properties there as desired and the numbers are created and now you know remember uh, as I said in the beginning it's important how you bring the components in an assembly and they will be ordered accordingly so the first component we uh, brought in the assembly was this orange one so that is number one the second one was this blue colored block so it's number two and then the third was this post so that is how we can create the balloons and then one last thing here is to indicate uh, the bill of materials because otherwise what are these numbers one and two and three uh, are meant by is when we go to tables click on bill of materials select this particular view top level only there are again several options here we want to use the uh, standard bill of material with the standard template just simply click on the check mark and the bill of material will be attached to the cursor the part numbers will be shown here you can leave the description uh, option uh, un, you know unfilled or even you can click on it and then uh, uh, write down the type of material once you right click on this uh, you can insert the columns just like in your spreadsheet you can uh, delete the table you can do all kind of different formatting stuff and um, that way you can create this bill of materials if I double click on it it's gonna ask me the question that the sale value is linked to the property in an external model so do you want to keep the link or break the link and override the value in the uh, bill of materials so if you break the link then you can restore it by clearing the cell you know so you can choose whichever options that you want to use it for let's say I use this copper uh, you know as a material you can type in there and then you can come out of it so every time after that since we use the keep the link option uh, even if I delete this table and go to again the bill of materials select this particular view click on the check mark uh, that option will again reappear here that's how we can uh, create the exploded isometric view and also create the bill of materials using the auto balloon option in the assembly drawing so that's it for this video thanks for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video where we will look at the motion collision the interference detection and the clearance verification